All right, I'm jumping back in here. I got my stick packed up and ready to go. And this is how I do it. There's nothing real fancy to it. Just took a bunch of bubble wrap, a couple sheets, taped it all the way around the uh, shaft of the stick, get down here to the blade. I just put a couple pieces of cardboard around it, taped it up really good all over the place. And this is gonna be fine now. Here's what's gonna happen. This thing is gonna be, everybody that works in one of the warehouses is gonna pick this thing up and play around with it. They may even shoot with this hockey stick. It's gonna happen, but I've never had one broken before and this is the way to go. This is the cheapest, easiest way I believe to uh, send this stick. Now, the stick dimensions were like 60 some odd inches long. And then you got this piece, so we're going about by 12 and then it's thin, so we're going by about two inches. Uh, actually, it ended up being cheapest to send it via USPS, uh, what is it called, Ground Advantage. Sending it UPS, which I thought was gonna be cheapest, ended up being like $23. This way it was $16.88. I charged $18, which I thought it was gonna be around that price, so $16.88. Going with the post office, even adding some dimensional or adding extra fees for the length. Everything only $16.88. Uh, so yeah, ends up being pretty good. It weighed less than two pounds. So it wasn't based on weight. It's just because of the size of this thing. So that's how I ship a hockey stick. Hey everybody, it's Mike AK, that reseller guy. It is Monday morning and that means we have a full weekend worth of sales to go over today, plus a bunch of other stuff. So yeah, we're gonna get into this quickly. Let's get going. All right, if you're new to this channel, you've never watched me before, I'm Mike, I go by that reseller guy. I stuff, sell stuff mainly on eBay, but I also have a collectibles booth I sell stuff at. Uh, I sell a little bit these days on Amazon still, and I sell sports cards at a couple different locations. So uh, yeah, we're gonna get into eBay sales today. It was actually a crazy good weekend of eBay sales. I don't know how that happened. You guys have been following me for a while. I've been complaining a little bit, I think we all kind of are, that eBay's been so erratic. Sales up, down, up, down, up, down and you'd really have no idea what's gonna happen. I actually had one day last week with no sales. Uh, it used to happen maybe once a year I'd have one day with no sales. And I think it's happened like five or six times already this year. So definitely, you know, we all say something's going on over eBay, but who really knows? I'm not getting into that today. We're talking about sales, because sales were good. Big thumbs up to sales. And I sold 21 items, almost $1,300. So everything that sold, well, not everything. Most of the items that sold, were pretty good high dollar items. Couple couple little ones, as always. But yeah, I sold some good stuff this weekend. I'm really happy about that. It's gonna be a tough shipping day because I got some unique items and I will show you in the end how I pack those items too because maybe you come across one of these and you're gonna go, how the heck do I ship that, Mike? And I'm gonna tell you now, so you better watch the video. All right, I'm gonna get into a couple things that are in the way that I don't want to fall off the desk. I got stuff over here, over here, over here on the shelf, kind of everywhere. All right, we're going to start with baseball cards at first just because it's there and it's most precariously sitting on the edge here. I don't want it to fall. 2007 Topps Baseball Factory Set. This is the kind that they sell inside Targets and Walmarts and stuff like that. Uh, it has exclusive 10 rookie variation cards. Yeah, I think when they sell these in Target, I think they're usually like 50, 60 bucks. Uh, so yeah, uh, this one here I bought from uh, one of the guys that brings me cards all the time. I have a couple different guys that bring me a lot of different card collections. I just finished pricing one out that's back there. Stuff that I bought yesterday, spent $200 on all that stuff. But that's not what I'm talking about. I get off topic all the time. So yeah, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Uh, this card set sold for $44.99. I think I had it, I might have had it at 50 the pop-ups today might be a little different than the price I tell you because I could have sent an offer, could have sent a 10% discount. I think I had one item that was on sale. So kind of prices are gonna be everywhere, but I'm gonna tell you the right price regardless of what's on screen. Don't listen to the screen, listen to me. All right, so 20, 2007, do you say 2007? I never say 2007, I don't know how I said that. 2007 Topps Baseball Factory Set. And when I ship these, I've showed it before, I basically just take a piece of big thick cardboard and kind of roll this up and I call it like a little burrito to where I have cardboard all around it. I try to put a you know an inch or two on the end of each box, put some void fill and then cap those off and ship it that way. It's the easiest way to ship sets. Never had a problem shipping it that way uh, versus putting it in a big oversized box and uh, it costing a, a lot more ship because this set's pretty heavy. This thing probably weighs, I don't know, five pounds, six pounds, somewhere in that range. So that was the first item to sell. $45, I think I paid $20 for that set. When I'm buying cards like that, when I'm buying them in bulk from a friend, a couple connections that I have that bring me over like a bunch of sets, a bunch of card boxes, 
it's not like I'm getting them at 10% of value. It just doesn't happen like that. So I'm generally spending anywhere between 40 to 60% just kind of depending on what the item is. In that case, you know, like I said, I paid about 20 bucks. All right, next up, this honestly I think is such a cool item. If I collected like racing and NASCAR, this would be in my collection. This is a micro machine set from the Indianapolis 500. I think I'm gonna make this my thumbnail. We'll go boom. Yeah, I don't know. You know, sometimes thumbnails work, sometimes they don't. I don't know. So yeah, this is from Indianapolis uh, 500 1996 starting grid. So it actually has all the right colors of all the different cars of all those drivers at the Indianapolis 500 yet. Yeah. And I think on the bottom, it tells you all about each racer, where they were, what type of car they drove. This thing is pretty awesome. I mean, yeah, this is pretty cool. Uh, again, if I collected racing, this would definitely be in my collection. Uh, again, this was an item that I bought through one of my connections and uh, bought a bunch of different NASCAR items. I think one I sold the other day. Actually, I'm going to put the one that I sold the other day up on the screen too because that was part of this one, this really cool funny car. And actually, that's going to get me to this little non-sponsored endorsement. I'm going to be all over the place today. I can already tell. It's not going to be straightforward video. We're going to go like this. We're going to take a couple of spats. We're, we're, we're going to get it. It's going to be a long video, folks. I can tell that. Uh, I bought this stuff because some of these items, this one, this one doesn't really smell. Yeah, I gave it the sniff test. I had a lot of items that smelled like smoke. They came from a smoker's house. Give it another test. This one actually was, was pretty good. The one that I sold the other day, it kind of reeked of smoke. So I knew all those items I was going to have to ship. They were good, valuable items. I didn't want to just not sell them because they sell, smelled like smoke. So I went on this bunch of research, found the different ways you can get rid of smoke smell. And the most inexpensive way was with this spray called Smoke Eater. Yeah, Smoke Odor Eliminator. And I think it has like a little bit of a smell of uh, lavender and chamomile. It says right there. So what you do is, what I did is I took the box all apart. So it had a box and packing foam the car. And I just sprayed this stuff kind of all over it, let it sit out in my car, out in the garage for a little while. Went back after, you know, several hours, gave it a sniff again. If it had a little hint, sprayed it again. The stuff worked great. I'm not going to lie. This stuff was like magic with that smoke smell. So uh, I'm going to see if I can find this on, I think I bought it on Amazon. So I'm going to put a link down below. Uh, I don't get any bonus money from this company from selling this or from getting you to buy it. But if you ever have items that have smoke, this stuff works great. I don't remember the price. It wasn't expensive. Uh, yeah, I'm not even going to guess what it was. I'm going to try to remember to put a link down below. I know a lot of us deal with stuff that has smoke smell in it, or maybe it works with other smells as well, but it worked for me and I definitely recommend that. So uh, yeah, well, now, we're, now we'll get back to this. Yeah, I sold this. What did it sell for? Uh, let's see. I'm going to be going up and down my screen here because I'm not going in any order today. You guys know I never, never seem to uh, have all my ducks in a row. Uh, $59.99. Yeah, this holds for $60. I think I gave him $25 for this set. Uh, pretty cool. Pretty cool set. Yeah. If, uh, again, if I liked Indy or, or racing, this would definitely be in my collection. All right, now we're getting into some of the small, some of the sports cars, get these things that are front. We're, now we can work our way back and then work our way around the room with all the other junk. I sold the little Jets patch. Yeah. Oh, Aaron Rodgers, man. What a story. Four plays and then he's out for the year, but somebody still bought this New York Jets patch. I think I had it at my store for 10, maybe it sold a little bit of a discount. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, it's right here, $9.99. Did sell for the full $10 uh, and I did charge $4 shipping. I thought about just putting this in an envelope. I could ship it out for a dollar, but uh, we're gonna ship it out bubble mailer for four bucks. Uh, cards, 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 cards. All right, we're gonna go down in order on the cards just that way I'm not gonna have to flip around too much. All right, now first off, this card sold for a lot more than I thought it was gonna be worth. This is a multiplayer card. Listen to who's on this card. We got Derek Jeter, Ken Griffey Jr., Cal Ripken, and Ichiro right there. Great combo of guys, all Hall of Famers. Well, Ichiro's not there yet, but the rest of them are. Uh, this card is from 2008 Upper Deck Heroes, and it's numbered out of like 249. So it's not super low numbered, but because it has all those guys, I knew that uh, somebody would be interested in it for their collection. Sold for $30, yeah, $29.99 plus shipping. I, th I think I bought this for $3 at a card show when I bought a bunch of Griffies. Because number down to 249 doesn't seem like this would be worth a whole lot, but yeah, $30 for that card. It did take a while to sell. It's probably been in my store six months, but got the full $30 for that one. All right, now the cheapest card that I sold is a Star Wars card. Yeah, I sell, I sell everything. You guys know it's not just sports cards. Never heard of this person from Star Wars. There are literally thousands of characters in Star Wars and they do all have names. 
and some companies have made cards for just about all of them. Uh, so I'll try to pronounce his name correctly. Elo Asti? Sure. This card is made by Tops Tech. It's the blue parallel, numbered out in 99, sold for $4.99 plus shipping. So this one will go out eBay standard envelope, just charge a dollar for shipping. We'll send it out that way. Uh, you do get tracking, well, you get tracking when it's delivered, and you also get insurance with it, so that's all good. Uh, next card is an autograph card, former Indiana Pacers. Great? I don't know. I think Rick, Rick Smith's had a good following. Uh, this card is from 1996-97, on-card autograph of Rick Smith's. Now, it did have a little bit of an issue, and it's, there's no way I'm going to be able to show it to you. It looked like it had like a print like a roller mark, like when it's being manufactured, they use these rollers to get the sheets going through and it had like a little mark on there. You couldn't feel it, it wasn't a crease, it wasn't a dent, I don't know. So I priced it a little bit less than what it would have gone for without that. Might have been able to get another five or 10 bucks, who knows. Uh, either way, sold for $17.99 plus shipping. I think I had it for 20, sent 10% off. That one can still go out eBay standard envelope since it's under 20 bucks. Uh, the next is a Magic the Gathering card. I told you, I sell everything. Bought a collection of Magic the Gathering cards not too long ago. Had a lot of good stuff in it from uh, the, the mid to late 90s. So that was kind of stuff uh, that I played with way back in the day. Uh, this is called Altar of Dementia. Just a Magic card. Sold for $10 plus shipping. And the last single card is one of the greatest players ever to play basketball. Larry Bird. Yeah, if you haven't watched like the Larry Bird and uh, Magic Johnson documentary that's online, the Dynasty of the Lakers, uh, what's it called, Showtime, I think. Watch that, too. That's pretty good. It's got a lot of Larry Bird stuff in there. It's pretty funny. Uh, this card is from 2018. Panini Contenders Cracked Ice. Serial number out of just 23. If you can see the serial numbering right down there by his shoes. Uh, really cool card. This one also sold for $19.99 plus shipping. So I think I'm sending that one out eBay standard envelope as well. Now, I will give a little eBay standard envelope Update that. I had a card damaged by them the other day. All these are standard size cards. They're all thinner, regular cards. But when you get thicker cards, even if they're under $20, I think I'm going to start shipping most of them within a padded envelope because I've had a couple that have gotten damaged. So you see that card, see how thick that is? When they go through their machines, it's not hard, even if they're in a protective holder like this, for them to get bent and creased. And I had one the other day. It was a $13 card. It got damaged. Uh, so yeah, so I had to refund the buyer. I'm gonna look in to see if I have any recourse with eBay, or I mean with the post office to see if it got damaged through that because it does say you have insurance. So I have the pictures from the guy that showed that it's damaged. So we'll see. We'll see if I can get my money back through the post office. I don't know. Is it worth it? It's 12 bucks, but I'll try. A couple more card things and then we'll get to the rest of them. Next is a sports card set from 1993. It's this big set right here. Uh, 1993 Collector's Edge football. That's what the cards look like. They're actually really nice, high quality cards, but Collector's Edge really never took off. Uh, they had a few years that they made cards. This is actually a pretty nice set. They were one of the first ones to actually like serial number cards. And they actually put like a serial number on the back of the card, showing that like kind of like how many were made. Uh, the set wasn't complete. It was actually missing three cards, uh, but I didn't feel like going and spending like the three to five dollars it would cost me to get those cards to complete it. I know I could still sell it without. So I sold it for $21.24. It had to be some sort of discount. I think I had it at 25, so it's, I don't know, 10 or 15% off. Uh, now, be before the guy bo bought it, he sent me a message. Does it smell like smoke or have any odor? I thought well, it was kind of strange, but I understand a lot of people can be sensitive. So I gave it the sniff test. Now, I think sometimes mentally, you can just make yourself think that something smells like smoke. So I was all giving you the test. And I'm like, I don't think so. Sniffing it all over, but I think we're good to go. I'm not going to spray that smoke stuff all over the cards because that definitely would damage cards. One more card thing, and actually it's a pretty good sale. Let me I, see. i got to scroll back up for this one because I sort of overlooked it as I went down my list. Where is it? It's on here somewhere. Here it is. All right. Now, this is has been my store at this point over a year. I had bought three of these sets from, again, one of my connections. Uh, but this was like the worst condition set of the group because you can kind of see. So see how those top cards are all curved like that? So the bottom set... It's nice and straight. This set is all curvy. Just They must have been stored incorrectly. And uh, yeah, those ones just got all curved. So uh, they can be straightened out. You could flatten them, uh, put it under a press somehow, flatten them back out. I don't know. There's some way to do it. I'm not going to do that. Uh, but yeah, I originally had this, I think, at 250 bucks. The first couple sets, I think I might have sold at either 250 or 300 So it's a really valuable set. 
1995 Topps Garbage Pail Kids set. Yeah, so the original Garbage Pail, Garbage Pail Kids, but this is the UK, the United Kingdom version, and it's like a mini size. So you can see that's the size. Here's a regular size card, a little bit bigger. Uh, but yeah, this set's pretty valuable, especially because you got, uh, well, you got Nasty Nick right there. That's a good one. Uh, this card set uh, I sold for 150 bucks. Yeah, I have this. Them send me a message say what's my best price at this point. I kind of just wanted it gone. I think I paid them 125 per set. So after fees, I'm breaking even on this one, but I'm just getting my money back because I think it was just turning a lot of people off that I had those little bit of. I'm not going to call them damaged because they're still perfectly fine. The corners are good and all that. But uh, yeah, I think people uh, were afraid of buying that one. Now we're just going to go down my list. It's going to make me get up and get over here and get an item for you. It's not too far straight over here, but I have to get it carefully because, well, you'll see. All right, I sold this tank. Yeah, this is pretty cool. I bought four of these different model kits at a Goodwill. They were all in hanging bags. And I could see the brand name of them because one of them had the instruction booklet with it. I actually took the uh, cannon or the gun, whatever, off this tank. This is a German tank from World War II. Model kit is made by Kobe, C-O-B-I. So it's kind of like a Lego copycat, offshoot, whatever. And their items do pretty well. If you look for new ones, they sell for $50 to like $300 for some of their model kits. So that's why I bought these four. This is the second one to sell. We've put two together because, again, now we don't have instruction booklets. But I found somebody on YouTube, of course, had a video of the instruction booklet. And literally, it's just them turning the page. You get to see the page for five seconds. So you can pause it while you build that page, flip the page. Yeah, it's pretty good. Some people out there on YouTube are smart. Uh, but yeah, I paid, I think, $6 for each of these model kits. This one sold for $50, and it sold within a few hours of me listing. So that was really good. Uh, this thing's going to fall apart when I ship. I'm going to bubble wrap it up, but the LEGO knockoff brands don't stick together as well as the LEGO brand does. They just never do. So I know this is going to fall apart, and I actually put that in my description. I'm going to bubble wrap it, but I know some pieces are going to come loose and fall apart during shipping, and you're going to have to kind of reassemble it. Plus, I took off, you know, like the main... Can you can see it right here. There's the main barrel right there. So yeah, that was a good sale, $6 to 50. Move that back over there out of the way because I don't want it to get in my way and accidentally knock that thing off. If that thing were to fall off my desk, it would go into a million pieces and I know I'd lose some of them. And actually that tank was actually missing two pieces. One of them, I was able to find a Lego replacement. I put that in the description. The other one was kind of an odd shaped piece. So I just put a picture where that one was missing. Still, person bought it. So your set does not have to be 100% complete for it to sell. Even the last helicopter that I sold, I think I sold that one for 35 and that was missing a piece as well. All right, cheap sale. This one sold through my 35% off sale. I went and picked out like another 100 some items. I put it 35% off like a week ago. This is the first one to sell. So those items must really suck because no one wants them even at 35% off. I don't know. Uh, Real Salt Lake Soccer. Just one of these old flag banner things. Picked it up for a dollar at a thrift store. Uh, sold for $6.49 through my sale. So yeah, just getting rid of that uh, flag. Did sell a couple of baseballs, autographed baseballs. Uh, first one was mine. Now, you'll see why I'm saying this one was mine. Uh, this is Brooks Robinson, Hall of Famer Brooks Robinson. He's got this big autograph. You can literally see every letter, but it always goes all the way across the baseball. And this one is authenticated. There's the sticker right there, all the American League baseball. But you see, the ball's got some yellowing. It's called toning when you're talking baseball talk or collectibles talk. Uh, this sold for $49.99 plus shipping. Now, I believe I bought this off a of whatnot show. I paid around 20-ish dollars, I think, on there. A couple of different people that I watch on whatnot. I can get some good deals, find stuff like this for 20, flip it for 50. And it's, you know, sports stuff. So I, you know, you know I like that stuff. All right, next up, this is the consignment autograph baseball. I've been talking about it lately. I've been doing a lot of consignment with a friend of mine. We just split the net proceeds 50-50. Uh, but yeah, this one here is, I got I to gotta look at his name because otherwise I will pronounce it incorrectly and somebody will make fun of me. So see if I can get it right here. Shintaro Fujinami. I think I got it. Yeah, he was with the Oakland A's originally. I think he's with Baltimore now, if I'm correct. Someone can uh, let me know down in the comments if, I, if I'm incorrect. But there's his autograph right there. He put the little number 11 on there. This is on a Major League Baseball. Now, this one is not authenticated, so I haven't got the time or hadn't gotten it authenticated yet. One, It's 100% legit. I know where these come from. Again, it's, it's a guy that I do some consignment deals with. And uh, this was signed here locally. I'm in Arizona, so we have spring training and baseball camps all over the place. Pretty easy to get a lot of guys, especially when they first get to camp. Uh, so yeah, this sold for $79.99 plus shipping. More than Hall of Famer Brooks Robinson. 
uh, without a cer certificate. So it's sold for 80 after we take out the shipping and the fees and all that, then we'll cal calculate how much each of us gets. We'll just say it's at $40 before fees. So figure I'll probably get 32, $35, somewhere in that range for selling that ball form. So it's a pretty good deal. For all right, next item is this little set back here. You've seen me sell a few of these in the past, these little Linkable sets. I know my wife and daughter make fun of me for getting these and testing them and playing with them as they like to call it because they sing songs, but I got to make sure they all work, that they all interact. They're called linkables because when one talks and sings, the others talk back and sing along with them. So I'm always buying these anywhere from, I found these for as cheap as a dollar and my goal is to pay under $5 for the bigger ones. And my guess, my average price is probably around three, 350 per unit when I'm selling these. I'm trying to get them for that 15 to $18 range because I sell them for the whole set of five I saw them for 60 bucks, 59.99 plus shipping. And so far my success rate on them working is pretty good. I bet one out of 10 doesn't because it has some battery corrosion or sometimes they just don't link up with the other ones no matter how, how hard I try. Uh, but yeah, sold another set of those. I just listed another one because I'm always buying these things and you can see back on the floor, let's see, there's one, two, three, there's four more back on the floor there. So as soon as the one that I listed over the weekend sells, I got another set ready to go. I'm always buying these things, I find them all the time in the thrift stores. Uh, so yeah, get $60 for that set of five. And the thing is, there's a lot of those out on eBay, but not a lot of people are doing these sets. So it's not the complete set. I think they make like 10 or 12 different ones, but people don't wanna pay, buy them individually and then have to pay $10, $12 shipping for each one. They can buy the whole set for me for 60 bucks and uh, get a good shipping deal on that too. So yeah, yeah, that's something that I recommend. All right, next item was micro machines where you did that one. So I got a football helmet down here. Now this isn't your standard football helmet. This was pretty cool. So I saw this on the shelf at a Goodwill and I thought it was just a high school team. I saw this here, said it was a good looking helmet. That's what it looks like inside. We got one of these nice shut air helmets, but this one has some autographs on it. So yeah, we got an autograph here, an autograph right there, there, and another one in the front. Uh, what I turned to find out was this was from the HBO TV series, uh, what is it called? Pl or ESPN, not HBO. It was on ESPN called Playmakers. I think it played for one or two seasons. And I don't remember the actors' names, but these were four of the main actors from that show. Found a few comps out there. Yeah, they must have done these as a promo for something. I don't know. But there were a few out there. Had it in my store for 100 bucks. I sent out a lot of offers. It's been in my store probably close to a year at this point. I mean, at least six months. I've been sending a lot of offers for like 80, 85 bucks. Nobody was taking them, but somebody took Full price offer over the weekend. So yeah, I got the full hundred dollars for this and I'm trying to remember what I paid for it, but it wasn't that much. I think it was like 12, 15 bucks, somewhere in that range. So yeah, pretty good deal. Got a hundred dollars for this one. You've all seen me sell helmets. They're easy to ship. 12 by 12 by 12 box, ships out easy. All right, I gotta turn my fan on in here. I've, I've, I think I mentioned this like every video. When I close my office door, something with the airflow in this house where this, this room gets hot. All right, we're getting there. We'll scroll down the list a little more, a little more. All right, now this was a quick flip, surprisingly. I bought this item for $7. Yeah, they had this mark $7 for this head cover, but it was brand new in the bag. This tailor-made head cover for R500 series. I'm not really a golfer. I'll play once in a while, but I don't know how new or old this brand is. There was no brand new ones out there on eBay. Lots of sold, tons of sold comps out there for anywhere from like $5 to $12, maybe even 15 for used ones. So I priced mine at $21.99 for a new one and it sold the same weekend. So yeah, $7 to 21, I'll take that. I'll take that flip. I'm not, a lot of people don't like these lower dollar ones, these 10, $15 profits. I have no problem taking them. I'm gonna show you another one right here. It's the same sort of thing. I bought a hanging bag. It had four of these Moen, I believe that's how you pronounce that. This is just like a like a secure mount for like a little bar that you put it in your bathroom for like seniors or people that need a little extra extra help uh, moving around in, in in the bathroom or in the tub. So there was four of these in the bag, and the bag was six dollars. I figured I could make two lots of two, and it sold for sixteen eighty eight for one lot. So that's we'll just say that's uh, seventeen dollars two lots. That's thirty four dollars six into thirty four before fees. That's pretty good. And it's just one listing to sell all four of them. So the first two sold, I think it took about a week for the first two to sell. So I assume the other two will sell relatively quickly as well. But I know a lot of people will pass up these lower dollar profit ones, but not me. All right, I got some more cars that I sold. Part of that big car collection that I purchased that I mentioned earlier that I don't think I really showed off in a video or anything. 
but you'll, you'll see all of them as they get sold. These are Johnny Lightning Funny Car Legends. And this actually came in like this big, long, tall uh, display. So they were all displayed like, whoa, that one wanted to go flying. Displayed like this, and it had like an outer cardboard cover on it. And I didn't want to ship it like that because I'd have to have a really big, big, long box for that one. So I went ahead and opened it up and just showed the six cars that I had. These are all really, really cool cars. And I'll give you a close-up of one of them here. That guy right there. Yeah, these are cool cars. Uh, I don't know any of the drivers. These are all funny car legends, but I'm not into funny cars, so didn't really know. Uh, this sold for $35.99. So I had it at $39.99 and gave it 10% discount. $35.99 plus shipping. I think I paid them $15 for this set. It was actually worth a little more than I expected. All right, now you're sitting there going, all right, Mike, what's the big awkward thing that you have to ship? Well, they're right over here, I think. I'm gonna make sure that I didn't miss anything else first because there's stuff everywhere. Let's, let's see. I sold, yep, I sold a hockey stick, but not only did I sell one hockey stick, I sold two hockey sticks. Now, you've probably never seen me sell a hockey stick before. I haven't sold many through the years because they're a pain in the arse to ship, yes. So you got this blade on the end that's all curvy. You got this big, long wooden stick that's like, I don't know, five foot tall, something like that, maybe a little bit more. And uh, yeah, the only reason that I listed these is because another friend of mine, the same one that I do all this consignment items for, he had a couple of hockey sticks he wanted to sell. So he brought those over the other day and I've had a stack of hockey sticks in the garage that have been in there for many years. And I just ignore them because I don't want to list and ship hockey sticks. They're, they're a pain. So the funny thing is, is he brought me two sticks. They haven't sold. The two sticks I listed, they both sold the same weekend. So. In the end, it worked out really good. So thanks, Bobby, for bringing those hockey sticks over. Uh, it, it got me off, off my lazy butt to get mine sold. So what ones did I sell? First off here, there's nothing real special about this as a stick. I don't, I'm going to try to pronounce it Hespeller, I believe is how it's pronounced. Uh, but this is a Wayne Gretzky signature model. That doesn't mean he autographed it. It just means that it's a Wayne Gretzky stick. This is a printed on autograph. And... I'm still trying to make sure that the buyer knows that it's not an actual autograph because they said they're buying it for a person for a present uh, and if I could ship it out right away. So I, I'm getting it prepped to ship. I did send them a message saying, hey, I just wanna make sure that you understand that this is not actually autographed by Wayne Gretzky because a lot of people can get confused by it. You say signature model stick. I don't say autographed, I don't say anything like that, but because they see that right here, a lot of people think these are really autographed. Trust me, you'll see stuff like this out on eBay with people saying autographed Wayne Gretzky stick. It's not. I had it in my store for $175. I just kind of picked a price. There were a couple comps out there. Most of them were out 125 to 150, uh, but there was none available. So I put mine at 175 and this person asked, you know, obviously if I would take a better price, I went ahead and $115. I mean, it had been sitting in my garage for years. So to pull, pull this stick out of the garage and get 115 bucks for it, I am, happy with that price. So let's get it over here, get it out of the way again, and get to the next stick. Uh, the next stick, I honestly don't remember where I got this stick from. I've had sticks in the past that I bought at the local auction, uh, at the little box lot auction that's now closed. I've bought some at the sports auction. I think I bought some at an estate sale once. So I don't really remember where this came from. Now I had to do a little research on this one. Now this one at least had a name on it. So let me see if I can do this without knocking everything around. So we had T. Uh, it looks like Johnson, but he's he's from Sweden. So, however, a Sweden Swedish person, uh, Janssen, maybe. So, I did a little research, found that name, and then it's also autographed. Like you have to flip this around, so it's got an autograph right here. So then I go out to eBay and I look for autographs by Tomas Janssen, if I'm pronouncing that right, and I found it. Yeah, I matched this up. So this was his game use stick. Uh, there's no tape on it anymore. There's no tape here and there's no tape on the handle. There are remnants from where the tape was. It's kind of hard to see. And that's very important, whether it's just a like a game or team issued stick versus actually being used in a game. A lot more desirability for ones that are actually game used. But uh, yeah, I had somebody contact me. I had no idea where to price the stick. There was none out there available for sale. So I said, what kind of price? Oh, let's try 300 bucks or best offer. Yeah, so I put it out there for $300 best offer almost instantly. I had a collector contact me and said, I'm a big collector of New York Islanders, I think it's Islanders, uh, New York Islanders sticks. 
And your first off, your price is crazy. His six sell, sticks sell for about seventy-five dollars. Uh, do you have a realistic price that you would s sell it for? I just, you know, kind of laughed. And uh, yeah, I had a couple of different watchers on it. I had a few views, and I said, you know what? I'm gonna let it sit for a while. I don't really want to totally discount my price yet. We'll see what sort of interest there is in it. And he showed me a, a couple of pictures of his hockey stick room, and it was crazy. The dude has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hockey sticks, all from the New York, New York Islanders, and he really wanted to add this one to his collection. Uh, so he offered me a hundred bucks. I took it. Yeah, again, this was sitting in my garage, and I really have zero emotional attachment to it, other than knowing that it's going to be kind of a pain to ship. I told him how I ship hockey sticks, and I'm going to insert a separate clip here because I'm going to do this later as I do these sticks. But I'll show you a little inserted clip here of how I packed the stick. All right, I'm jumping back in here. I got my stick packed up and ready to go, and this is how I do it. There's nothing real fancy to it. Just took a bunch of bubble wrap, a couple sheets, taped it all the way around the uh, shaft of the stick, get down here to the blade. I just put a couple pieces of cardboard around it, taped it up really good all over the place. And this is going to be fine now. Here's what's going to happen. This thing is going to be... Everybody that works in one of the warehouses is going to pick this thing up and play around with it. They may even shoot with this hockey stick. It's going to happen. But I've never had one broken before, and this is the way to go. This is the cheapest, easiest way, I believe, to uh, send this stick. Now, the stick dimensions were like 60-some-odd inches long. And then you got this piece, so we're going about by 12. And then it's thin, so we're going by about 2 inches. Uh, actually, it ended up being cheapest to send it via USPS, uh, what is it called, Ground Advantage. Sending it UPS, which I thought was going to be cheapest, ended up being like $23. This way it was $16.88. I charged $18, which I thought it was going to be around that price, so $16.88. Going with the post office, even adding some dimensional or adding extra fees for the length. Everything only $16.88. Uh, so yeah, ends up being pretty good. It weighed less than two pounds. So it wasn't based on weight. It's just because of the size of this thing. So that's how I ship a hockey stick. So yeah, I thought that was pretty good. So both of my hockey sticks got $215 for those two sticks. And uh, you know, it, they take a little bit of time to pack up, but it's not too bad. So really good sales weekend. I don't think I'm missing anything. I don't feel like I'm missing anything. 21 sales for, what did I say, almost $1,300. So first off, it's the first weekend I've had in a while where I've sold qu quite a few items, 20 plus items, and a really good dollar amount to, uh, I've been struggling on the weekends lately. It seems like one of the days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, one of those days I'll sell next to nothing. So really good weekend of sales. Big thumbs up, T-Bay. All right, now let's have some random uh, show and tell items. Uh, the other day I was going through some items that were my wife's when she was a kid she had a couple big boxes of barbie uh barbie dolls barbie clothes and then a few other doll types and stuff so we've been selling those on our what i call our family ebay account we sell personal items on there and uh, items i'm not going to sell in my store because that's business related the other items will we'll sell on there and we'll use that for our vacation fund and stuff but i thought this one was really cool this uh, brought back some good memories as a kid you used to get these in your happy meals these you would get these little hand puppets. I can't even fit my hand in here, although I can get like four fingers in there. Uh, but yeah, they made all the different characters. They made Ronald Grimace, Hamburglar, and uh, maybe like Mayor McCheese or somebody. But yeah, I just thought it was pretty funny. I don't know. Does anybody remember these? Are any of you old enough, as old as me, to remember getting these little plastic hand puppets back in the day? Let's continue on with the show and tell or the what did I find at the thrift store stuff. I don't know if any of you watched my short video that I put out the other day. Every once in a while, I'll throw a short on this channel. I have a couple other fun channels, my That Car Guy channel that I'll throw shorts on. Uh, but yeah, I don't think a lot of you did. So I'm going to show them to you now. I found some street sharks. I've never found street sharks at thrift stores before. These are a toy from, I think, the mid-1990s. I don't remember the exact year on these. Uh, they were in a hanging bag at a Goodwill. I think I just about flipped when I saw them over there and couldn't grab that bag quick enough to make sure that I saw what I thought I saw. But yeah, here's this guy right here. He's got this cool mohawk. A lot of times you'll find this one and people have cut his hair off. But yeah, got this one here. Here's the hammerhead guy. And there's three others. I just They're all actually all out of the garage because I already listed these. Hanging bag with five street sharks and it was $6.49. I listed the lot for a hundred bucks. They sell for 15 to 20 bucks a piece. But I thought maybe in one big lot I could get $100 for the five of them. Maybe I have to give a little bit of a discount at some point. But right now, yeah, I thought these things were really cool. And to find vintage toys, especially street sharks, at a Goodwill, 
and a hanging bag was kind of crazy. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a good find last week. I had a bunch of good finds last week. Last week was a really good uh, thrifting week. All right, this one I paid up for a little bit. This is, is a jacket, obviously. Big jacket here. And you can see right here, this is like a Denver Broncos logo, and it's Bill Romanowski. Popular player for the Denver Broncos. I think played for some other teams as well. But what's interesting about this jacket is, boom, brand new with tags right here. Uh, this is from Players Inc., Team NFL. Uh, I think these came out in the, must, must have been the late 90s is when these came out. There's the tag right there, just in case you're looking. What is it called? Pro Star. Pro Star, and this is an extra, extra large, but look at the price. $27.49. Mike, you pay $27.49 for this? No, I did use a coupon, but I did pay over $20 for this jacket. It was just too cool to pass up. So I did a little research while I was in the store looking up this brand in for the Denver Broncos. And it looks like they did make a couple players. They made Terrell Davis. That was the most popular one that I saw out there on eBay. I did see another Bill Romanowski one, but not brand new with tags. Now, it's summer here. It's hot here in Arizona. But up in Denver, it gets cold. So this jacket will sell probably before Christmas time, maybe before. I'm losing my voice already this morning. That's not a good thing. I've been doing a lot of talking already. I'm 36 minutes into taping right now. I don't know how long you've been watching for. Uh, anyway, I am going to list this jacket probably for like 70 bucks. I don't know if that's too high. Probably 50 to 70 is the right selling price. I paid 20 ish so obviously I paid up for it, but it was just too cool to pass up. I, can, I can't leave items that are this cool, brand new with tags, in the store, even if it is $20. All right, the last one that I'm going to show you, because my voice is going. Uh, I bought three of these large flags. These are huge, 76 inch wingspan 3D kites, brand new in the box, paid $5 a piece for them. Uh, this one's the dragon. I think there's a like a unicorn and then uh, maybe a phoenix. No, it said firebird, thunderbird, something. But it's in this long box here. So it's here. I honestly think I'm just gonna ship it in this box. I don't think I'm gonna like repackage it. Maybe I'll put some paper over it or something. I don't know. What would y'all do? What would you do with something like this if you sold it on eBay? My other option is to try putting it in my collectibles booth. Now I paid $5 a piece for them. On eBay, they're going for about 40-ish, $35, $40. Do I put them for like $25 in my booth, see if they sell there first, that way I don't have to ship them? I think I'm gonna do that. What I might do is just put them in there until like Christmas. Now, Arizona, we're not a big kite flying state. We don't have beaches like, some other states where you can go out there and have a lot of room to fly kites. Are you allowed to fly beach or kites at beaches anymore? I know you can't throw a football or probably play frisbee at some of them. Uh, but let me know. How would you ship this box? Would you just slap a label on it and ship it? It's it's sealed at the ends. It's not going anywhere other than it getting banged up a little bit during shipping. It's not going to break. I don't know. What would you do? All right. That's going to wrap it up for today. Thanks, everybody, for watching this long. Uh, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I know if you've watched this long, most of you are probably subscribed. So thank, thanks for that. Uh, if you haven't checked out my That Card Guy channel, go check out that video. I try to get at least one video a week on that channel. I've been doing one on th this channel. I'm trying to do more content, but you know how it goes. Uh, I do have a third channel. If you want to see me get crazy and silly, go watch my KK and her dad open stuff channel. Uh, there is a link down below for that. Me and my daughter, uh, KK, do some videos, and we have a lot of fun doing those. And you see a completely different side of me in those videos. Uh, so yeah, you can watch those and have a little fun too. All right, that's it. You can tell the voice is gone. The voice is gone. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. See you next time.